We're in chapter uh, 2 of 2 Timothy, uh, verse 20, start there. But uh, we've been talking about Timothy. It's amazing how you probably take your uh, newspaper out and follow along in the newspaper and read, read this chapter, this book right along with us because it kind of exposes all that's going on around this. But uh, Timothy is writing his letter, or Paul writing his letter, letter to Timothy. It's the very last letter he writes that we have record of. Um, he thanks God in the first part. Uh, he writes to his son, uh, uh, Timothy to encourage him to keep going because Paul knows he's about to be, be beheaded and he's going to die. And Timothy's going to become the leader of the of the Christian church. And uh, Paul says, I thank God who I serve with a clear conscience. And he prays for Timothy in, in chapter 1. He even cried for Timothy. And then in, uh, um, he says in verse 6 to kin kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. In other words, he says... Don't let the fire go out. Keep it uh, fresh. Um, and then he says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. He, he encourages Timothy to hang in there and keep going. He goes on and talks about the fact that he would like to have him join in his suffering, in Paul's suffering. Uh, and he does that. He, he uh, talks about Christ in verse 10, who came to our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel for which I was appointed, Paul was appointed. And then he goes on to talk about faithfulness, people that, have, when he was in prison, a lot of the people didn't come anymore, only just the one uh, family kind of kept with him. And then he begins to talk about uh, things that we know about, be strong, you're my son, be strong, you're a good soldier, stand in there, don't follow the other things of the world, be disciplined like an ath athlete, follow the rules. And he goes on to talk about the fact that they suffered hardships, uh, even as a criminal. Paul suffered hardship even as a criminal uh, while he was put in prison. And then he talks about the fact that he's secure. If we are faithless, uh, in verse 13 of chapter 2, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Even when we're faithless, Christ is faithful to us, to care for us. An amazing God. And again, we talked a bit about this idea of a workman, rightly dividing the Word of God. We talked about that. And then now we're in, uh, we finished up with verse 18 and 19, men who have gone astray from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already taken place, and thus they upset the faith of some. There are people going around with this false message that Christ had already resurrected. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are hid. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord abstain from wickedness. The Lord knows those that are His. And we, we stand on a firm foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. That foundation is also the prophets and the, and the, and the apostles, and those that have gone before us. And when we see the tragedy that took place just in this last ten days, we see that tragedy. We don't really begin to grasp what's going on. We have all this stuff come flying at us and flying at us, and... One of the things that I really thought about personally is the, the young boy that did the killing. He didn't just go and decide to do that on that day. It was a tragedy he did. But uh, you look a little bit at his background. He was an adopted child. Both parents had died. Uh, he had some uh, issues with his uh, mental state. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guarantee you that the very people that were standing and telling him about what a bad guy he was picked on him when he was in school. They picked on him and they made fun of him and they, they bullied him because that's what happens in our world today. And all of a sudden, he retaliates. And I, it was a horrible retaliation. But there were so many symptoms and so many signs that people just let go. We, we need to be people, Amen. people of God. We need to be people that are sensitive, sensitive to those things that we encounter. Amen. There were some people that were sensitive. They called. The FBI didn't follow through. The, the local, uh, the local uh, police did not follow through the way it should have. Over 36 times they've been to this boy's house. But I want to say to you that we probably, as a society, beat this boy down just as well. We don't see anything that one family would get a kind of hammer now. They try to take him in and try to help him. But we, we have opportunity in our life to be able to help young people that are going through difficult situations that are struggling because of loss of parents, struggling because they're being bullied. My mom and dad had over 400, I think almost 500 people, children that went through their houses, foster kids, caring for them, helping, trying to help them get out of the path. But there is a path. 
But the problem is that we just keep pushing them off. And so as we begin to see the outcome of this, this tragedy in, in South Florida, we begin to see all kinds of solutions. I don't know if any of you have heard uh, anything about maybe we ought to begin to implant God back into our curriculum. Maybe we ought to begin to pray again. Maybe we ought to really begin to take time to help people understand where that. Has anybody heard that? No, I haven't. Do you have it? Oh, yeah, good for you. But there's just not that whole idea that we have a responsibility as a society, but more importantly, as the church, we have a responsibility to reach out and to minister to people that are different. That, are, uh, that maybe have struggles. And maybe we help them get into a program where they can get help. Maybe we, we do that, but we need to be sensitive to those that we encounter. And if we're not, we just kind of let them fly on by. And then Paul, but in verse 20, let me just go back into here, because uh, now in the large house, uh, he writes, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and of earthenware, and some to be honored and some of dishonor. Therefore, if any man cleanse himself, from these things, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared, prepared for every good work. Paul says, there's going to be people that are really living out the light. They're going to be gold and silver. They're going to be, there's going to be some ordinary folks, just earthen vessels, that are not really transformed by the power of God. He said, you don't kick those out. You don't get rid of them, but you begin to work with them. And if a man cleanses himself, if he comes to Christ, and if he cleanses himself from these things, these things that are causing him all the trouble, he will be a vessel uh, for honor, sanctified, useful to the Master. When, when we help people come to know Christ as a Savior, when we lead them to that decision, then they can have their lives flooded out of all the crud that's in it, and God replaces it with His Holy Spirit. And he, they can become people of honor, sanctified, and useful, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. He can be, it, but we have to be, the church has to be diligent. The church has to be proactive in reaching out to those that don't know him. They can be transformed. Um, the Bible teaches us that all of us can be transformed. The young boy uh, that did what he did can be transformed. My guess is he'll never get out of prison because they'll kill him. Uh, the inmates will take care of him probably before it's over. But the, this is the problem. He still, he can still be transformed by the power of God. Amen. And, and we have a responsibility as believers to be men and women that are willing to, to pour our lives into those situations. They don't always turn out the way that we would hope for them. They don't always turn out to be uh, success stories. But you know, I think about Jesus. Um, Jesus came and he lived a perfect life and he died on the cross. He died for you. He died for me. But there's a lot of people that never really respond to that. A lot of people just go on by. So it's not for us, it's not for us to say, well, nothing I can do about it. Because Jesus never said that he would stop. Never stop reaching out to each one of us. And he's called us, you and I, to be people that reach out to others. And he goes on, he talks about the fact that we're prepared for every good work, we're useful uh, to the Lord. But in verse 22, he says to the people, the young people that have just come to know Christ, people that now flee from youthful lust. He says for us to flee from youthful lust. Lust. Uh, you guys know the youthful. Uh, you know the youthful lust. I don't have to list them, right? You, you know what they are. Which probably some of us are old, we're still dealing with them. <laughs> um, but here's what he says to do. Here's what Paul tells Timothy to teach the people. And what Paul's still teaching through our work here, through your work as you go into the world, we're to pursue righteousness. We are to be men and women that are righteous, that we live a righteous life. We live a life that glorifies God. We're, we're to be men and women of faith. faith. Faith in Jesus Christ, faith in what God has done in our lives, and 
faith that the Word of God is true and it's, we can stand on the promises of God and we can stand on the foundation and no matter what happens, no matter what happens to us, they won't hold. The foundation will not fall. He talks about this idea of love. Agape, a love that we have for God and the love that God has for us to use to others. People that we don't really maybe want to have any love for, but God calls us to love. And also he talks about um, being people of peace. peace. Some, some days, peace isn't really right there in your back pocket. Did you ever notice that? Sometimes things happen and peace kind of runs, the, runs away, but that's only because of us. But we're to be people of love and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. We all should be people like this that are pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, and that we do it from a pure heart. And a pure heart comes from surrendering our lives to Christ on a daily basis. In Ephesians, to be ye filled with the Spirit. The word there, the Greek word, is a continuous filling. It's not just filled once and for all, but that we're continuously being filled by the Spirit of God because we are surrendered to Him, and that's how we have a pure heart. And to me, I, I like to use the example of you take a water glass and put it under the faucet, and if you fill it up and you take it out, well, Jesus, that water glass. You, you, drip, you put it, but the idea is that the faucet is continuing to run, it continues to overflow, and out of the overflow is how we impact people for Christ, out of a pure heart. And so, but we're to refuse, listen, we're to refuse foolish and ignorant uh, speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. We, we can avoid the quarrels in our life by people, by being people that pursue righteousness and love and peace. And that we are, have to live up from a pure heart. We can avoid the quarrels in life that come upon us. And then in verses 24 through 26, he says, uh, And the Lord's bondservant, that's a uh, bondservant, that's a, a slave, the Lord's slave, must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wrong with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Paul says to Timothy, and he's saying to you and to me, that we are to be the Lord's monster, doulos, love slave. We, we serve Christ as a love slave because of what he has done for us. The picture is that he sets us free from the slavery of sin. But we fall back at his feet and say, I will serve you for whatever you want. Not out of, we serve, fall back on our knees because of love, not because of the requirement, but because we love. And so we follow him and he says for us not to be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wrong. And then we're to have gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of truth. So how we how we come to people, we come to people in, in faith, we come to people in love and in peace, and through those that sort of a circumstance is how people will begin to see Christ living out in the midst of them and respond to repent in repentance. Leading to the knowledge of truth, they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do this his will. One of the things that Dr. Graham always did, he always had pretty much the same message. Uh, it may not have been the same scripture, but it always ended up back to the same thing. If he were to stand up here today and speak, which he's got other things to do today, but he won't be here, but um, he would say to uh, the situation in, in uh, South Florida, that uh, this is a tremendous tragedy, but God is able, greater is he that is in, uh, greater than he that is in the world, as I am greater than he that is in the world, and that he would overcome the situation in North Korea, he talked about that, and he would talk about how bad that is, but he would, and he would always bring it back to the fact, as I'm bringing it back to you, 
you now is that the hope, the hope of the world, is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And he lived and he died and he's coming again for you and for me. He, he is the one that we would take to the world. It's not about our government. It's not about the police. It's not about all. It's about how you and I, as representatives of Christ Jesus, present him to the world. And we have been given a mission, a mission of peace and love and faith that we live out with pure hearts into a world that is broken. And the people we encounter, all, all are people that need to know the Lord. And the choice is there. God does the work. We make the presentation of his life and what it means to become one who is a follower of the Lord himself. We have a responsibility, and, and uh, Paul talks about this to Timothy, that we need to be prepared to do it. We need to be, live a life of, of, of purity that draws people to Christ Jesus. <coughs> Next week, we're going to do chapter 3, and uh, don't miss because this is going to be... And you could bring a newspaper to read this right out of here, because this is this whole thing. All the stuff we've been talking about. Paul's going to lay out what's going to happen, what's going to happen in Timothy's time. And he's laying out in this next chapter the, exactly the stuff that's going on in our world where people, as someone asked about this, Christ being attacked in our, in our culture, all of those things. And, and one of the things as we, as we close today, I want you to understand that God is the victor. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. We, we, we live in a world that is being crushed, but God... But God is not being deterred. You and me are still out there proclaiming the gospel. We've been called to do that. I want you to know that we have the hope, the hope of eternal life. We have the hope of, of the glory of God and the rest of not only our life here, but for eternity. And we need to be people, we need to be people that live, live in that, in, in God's glory. And that we share that with others. And we encourage others in the midst of the troubles and turmoils that are going on in this world. And, and the, the good bad news is that it's not going to get better until the war returns. But God, listen, this is so exciting for us. God has placed us here in this time, in this place, to be a light to the world. You have God. God has called you to do this. Take the, to take the love of Christ to a, a hurting world. And you are empowered by the Spirit of God to do that. And as we go today, I want you to remember, it's not about what's here, it's about how we look outside and how we can make a difference to those that we encounter. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity we have to, to just uh, learn about who, what you care about, how you care so much for us, how you care so much for the lost. Father, help us to... Uh, just ingrain in our lives the reality that, that you care for those that seem to be different and to be odd. And if we don't believe that, all we got to do is look around and we can see that we're kind of a group of different and odd people. So you know that there's others out there just like a, us that need to know you. So help us to be faithful to the cause with a pure heart. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing together. Find us together, Lord.
men and women that, that uh, touch other lives uh, just with a, with, a, with a pure heart. So we thank you and honor you in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.